About a month ago, I built up this bike with the help of Cache and Trek, and I just checked my Strava and I've ridden this bike for a bit over a thousand kilometers, so I'm ready to give my review. In my build video, you guys asked heaps of questions, specifically around the pros and the cons of the bike and also how much it cost me to build up. So I'm going to answer all those questions in this video and I'm also going to tell you about a few special little touches that I've put on this bike to just customise it and make it my own. If you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. I've got a goal to reach 2,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I think we're on track for that. And if you're here returning, thanks for coming back. Drop a like and comment. I love those. And uh, let's get into the video. I want to end this video with a positive note, so I'm going to start with the cons. Here are some of the things that I've observed over the last 1,000 kilometers, which might be a negative for you. Some of these I've seen as a little bit of negative for myself. So this bike here, the top tube slopes to connect to the chain stays. And for the smaller frames, for example, the one I'm riding is a size 50, you get a very weird kind of looking to sloping top tube. Uh, and for some people, this would be a big turn off. Personally, I'm not too dissuaded by it, but I can see how some people think it'd look a bit odd. Another thing about Trek bikes is their logo. They have a huge obnoxious logo, which covers the whole down tube. Some people might not like this. I know that a lot of people joke about it online. So, you know, it's not for everyone. Another con that you see in a lot of other bikes these days is that they really want you to use their proprietary parts. So I'm talking specifically about handlebars here. So luckily for me, I had my old Trek Madone handlebar, which has an interface space between the bike and that handlebar, which works out fine. But say you want to use a third party one, sometimes this won't align properly with the top tube. One of my last complaints about this bike is the clamp that holds the saddle. It just operates on this kind of like friction mechanism and I found that even though I've tightened it up a lot, it still slips every now and then. Uh, I need to put more carbon paste in there or something. But I've never had this issue on other bikes and I'll put a little graphic up on the screen of how it works. Uh, but pretty much you just need to tighten it as much as possible for it to clamp properly. All right, this last con I have is probably a bit more my own fault. I didn't do that much research into 12 speed. I was just like, I'll just buy anyone. Uh, and the gear ratio I went with, while good, I could have probably tweaked it a bit better. So I'm running a 52, 36 on the front and 11, 30 on the back. Now this is a harder gear ratio than I had on my previous 11 speed bike. And you know, I feel like if you're gonna go to 12 speed and spend that money, you should try and get a wider range to get the most value out of it. So looking back, I probably should have just stayed 52, 36 at the front and got an 11, 34 in the back. Now the good news for me is it's pretty cheap to just buy a new cassette and then I just make my chain a little bit longer. So it's not the end of the world. All right, now onto the pros of the bike. This version of the Trek Amanda came out in 2020. So that's three years ago, almost four years. And in the bike industry, three years is a long time. And this is where I feel like Trek were a bit ahead of the game. This version of the Monda is super light, but also takes a lot of inspiration from the aero bikes, such as the Madone. Look at the fork here. It's got a nice aero taper to it, a bit skinnier than the Madone, and I really, really love that. Now I've thrown on about 40 to 50 millimeter tires, and these just feel amazing. So the bike is super aero while staying light. So for the frame, uh, this is on the Trek website for a size 56 and painted. The frame is 760 grams with a 381 gram fork and I'm running a size 50 so it's going to be lighter than that. Now some other really nice quality of life things that the Trek has put into the design of the bike. It's got through axles, it comes with a little through axle tool as well which just sits discreetly in the bike either in the front or the back. Uh, the threaded bottom bracket is awesome, no more creaking. That was a problem with the Madone, it had a press fit bottom bracket and I had to replace that a couple of times. Um, the bike, it actually uses the exact same geometry as the Madone. So for me, getting on this bike, even though I went down a size, it just fit like a glove. It just felt like a really, really familiar fit and I just love that. And the last thing is I absolutely love this paint job. It's got that really nice glossy black. Then on the back half of the bike, it's got this prismatic like silver, dark silver that just sparkles in the sunlight. And then, man, I actually don't mind too much the massive Trek logo. It's got this brushed metal effect that just looks fantastic. Now, plenty of people wondering this, what was the final weight of the build? Now with everything on it, the bottle cages and the pedals and the mounts, it came to 7.3 kilos, which I'm pretty happy with. Plenty of ways where I can make it lighter. 
In terms of further upgrades, if I want to lose some weight, one big easy way is to change my handlebars. These are the Madone handlebars, which are quite heavy, almost 500 grams. I could go to a third party one, which weighs about 280, 300, lose 200 grams there. Another way would be to change the wheel set. These Bontrager Triple X four wheels are nice and light for their depth. But there's definitely ones that are a bit better, maybe Zips or Envies or something like that. Uh, and then the last thing that I would upgrade is, I think in the future, once I've worn out this cassette, I might go to an 1134 just to get that extra gear for the climbing. Now here's one of the last things I wanted to touch on. When I first got this frame, I had this idea that I would get it custom painted and do something completely new. Uh, but there's a few things which stopped me from doing that. One was it costs a bit of money to actually get a frame repainted. You're looking at about $2,000. And then the most important thing actually was that it would void my warranty for this frame. So I was racking my brain for something else I could do to customize this bike. And I thought, why not make some custom stickers? Now I've got two West Highland White Terriers, some people have been asking me for more footage of these dudes in my videos, so here it is, and I love these guys to bits. The older one, his name is Ollie, he's four years old, the younger one is Wilbur, he's one, and West Highland Terriers, they're just an awesome dog, they come from Scotland, they're just really wiry and stubborn, they just do what they want, they've got a mind of their own, and they're such little characters, so I thought why not get some custom stickers of them on my bike, almost kind of copying that little cat that's on the standard bikes. So here's Wilbur on the top tube, and here's Ollie on the back of the seat post. And I have to thank my sister for drawing these up and making them for me. And I have to thank Jess, my fiance sister, for printing these out on her cry cut. And I think they look fantastic. I love how it looks. And the best part is because the bike is black, we just put little holes there for their eyes and the nose and it just comes through and it just looks perfect. All right, and the question that everyone wants to know, how much did this bike cost me? As you know, I got this frame as a warranty replacement, so that was free. And then I also cannibalized a lot of the parts from my old bike, such as the wheels, the saddle, the pedals, and the handlebars. So that could cook out a big portion of the cost. Also, I work at Cache, I work at a bike shop, so I got a little bit of a staff discount. Uh, so overall, the main things I had to buy was the group set, so these Galfa rotors, the bottle cages, which are really nice and some of the handlebar tape and little bits and pieces like the derailleur hanger. So all up, it came to a bit under $3,000 for me, which I reckon is not too bad for a new bike build. And then what I also did was I sold my old Ortega group set, the mechanical one off my previous bike, and I sold that for $900. So the net cost of this bike was around $2,000, which is not bad for a brand new bike. And I think that was pretty good and I'm quite happy with that outcome. Look guys, that's gonna conclude my thoughts on this bike. I have an awesome time building this up, making a build video for that. If you haven't seen it yet, go check it out on my channel. I'm going to put a link for it here. And I had heaps of fun just riding this bike, getting my thoughts on it and making this video. So if you enjoyed it, please leave a like and a comment. I uh, hope that you're enjoying the other videos on my channel. And if you've got any ideas for anything else you'd like to see, I'm more than happy to consider that. So just drop it in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, take care, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.